locked in for methane, you're listening to Radio Rift, the Temple of Rock. Bang your fucking head! The queen of all things metal. DJ Diva Sachia. feature may contain references to sex, drugs and rock and roll. Oh, and some bad language too. The Riff. <laughs>
And yes, indeed, you are listening to the one and only Temple of All Things Rock. This is DJ Diva Satya, special brand new location for Airwave Smackdown. You know, I was just thinking, what am I going to call this place? I'm no longer in the basement bunker with my buddy Rio. I am now high atop the beautiful hills of Minnesota with my sweetheart, the lock star, by my side, doing my thing here at the Temple of All Things Rock. Got a very special show for you guys tonight. Last week, before I made the big move out here, I had the chance to talk to bassist and lead singer of Swedish metal band Methane. You may think that's an oxymoron, Swedish metal band, especially when I tell you they're a groove metal band, but no, 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 it totally works, man. We're going to give a big shout out to uh, Lady Claire, who hopped in the chat room, who is a Methane fan, and I hope you're going to enjoy the interview. We're going to play some brand new stuff from the band. Got some huge emails this week. So, you know, the new music six-pack is just overflowing its boundaries. It's going to be a lot more than six-pack. Plus, this week's douche canoe (laughs) is a really wonderful one. I can't wait to share it with you. He outdid himself. I don't think he could have made an even bigger foot-and-mouth moment. But now let's get to the interview. This is me last week talking to Tim Scott from metal band Methane. Enjoy. The Riff. The following is a special presentation of Radio Riff, the Temple of Rock. This is DJ D. Vasachia, and you are tuned into Radio Riff, the Temple of Rock, Airwave Smackdown. I am talking from Sweden with Tim Scott of the band Methane. Hi, Tim. Hey, how you doing, Sasha? I'm doing fantastic, and you said my name right, so you already win the internet for today because almost yes, everybody I gets win. it wrong. They can't say <laughs> Sasha; it's not that hard to say, but it really isn't. Um, listening to you, of course, my listeners are right away going to say he doesn't sound Swedish, but you're originally not. You're from Northern California. You've gone from Northern California, like all across the United States, and finally landing in Sweden. How did that happen? Yeah, well, I was actually, I was born in Jersey, and I moved to California and lived there for, I don't know, like 15 years or something up in Eureka. And then I moved back to New Jersey, and I've been moving around with bands and stuff like that, New Jersey, Florida, I don't know. <laughs> you found so I moved, I've been moving my whole life, I guess, you know, it's not like a big a big thing for me. Well, I met a, I met a, a Swedish chick in, in, when I was living in Florida, and uh we decided to move out here after a while. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So that was kind of how I ended up here. You, your, your life sounds a bit like mine. I've gone from Pennsylvania to California to Pennsylvania to Washington State, and now to Minnesota in about a week. Yeah, see, <laughs> it's just I mean, part as long life, as you, you know. Ha- <laughs> as long as you haul those boxes, we can we can move. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, what was your musical youth life? How did you get involved in what you're doing originally? Yeah, originally, I don't know, I wanted to be Nikki Six originally when I was a kid, so I bought a bass. They were, Motley Crue was really cool in the early 80s, you know? Um, and it just progressed from there. The The whole thrash scene started in Northern California, and I got pulled into that real quick. Then moving, o- moving to New York, you know, it was still building up the thrash metal, death metal scene, and got into that. It's been a it's been a progression just the whole time. So you were in Northern California when all of that was happening. My God, I'm a huge thrash fan, so I envy you being right there where everything was going on. That is so cool. Right, I think it's pretty cool. I mean, I got to see a lot of great great shows back then too. So, and who did you like to go to see back in those days? Well, I, I saw Metallica Day on the Green when they were just kind of like a middle level band. I've seen. Uh, Slayer at the Stone in San Francisco. Oh my God! Like small club gigs, you know. I mean, that's brilliant. You are yeah. so you are so lucky. I bet you have a lot of great stories about those days. Oh, uh, whatever I remember. <laughs> you remember that is part of it, isn't it? <laughs> Very definitely. So the band itself is kind of young, you know. Methane has not been around long, but you and almost all the members are are pretty seasoned pros. You know, you've obviously got a long history in a number of bands, and so have the other guys. Are they all uh, Americans too, or you've got at least the sweet the drummer? It sounds like he's got a Swedish name, so I wasn't entirely sure. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy, our guitarist, and uh, 
Andreas. They're both Swedes. And then uh, the other guitarist in the band is my little brother, who just moved out here like a couple years ago. Oh, so he's out there with you too. Fabulous. Right, right. He was brave and made the trip. <laughs> cool. Um, you guys call yourselves a mixture of Southern Groove and Thrash Metal. When I listen to Methane, you know, I half expect Jax Teller to come breezing around the corner with the Suns. You've really captured the grit and the attitude of road tripping on a Harley on a hot summer day when I listen to you. That's exactly nice, what I imagine nice. myself doing. Nice. Was this yeah. a sound that the band collectively got behind right away? You know, Jimmy and I... I've, I've known Jimmy for a long time since I moved here, and we both come from playing death metal. And I think we just wanted to move away from just playing, you know, that re repetitious, fast beats all the time and technical music and do something with a groove that just, you know, makes you want to bounce. And that's kind of what we were after. And no, I mean, we didn't really sit down and make a plan like, okay, we're going to play Southern metal, but it started to sound like that. And it, it, we had that real Pantera vibe to it. And so we went with it. Most definitely. I mean, when I listen to you guys, it's like, are we in Texas? That's what it just feels like. I mean, <laughs> I have a lot of buddies that play in the Houston area, and you totally sound like you would just fit right in with with what's going on down there or, or, or any of that southern groove. I mean, do the Europeans get it? I would think they wouldn't necessarily grasp it as well as we do in America. You know, I mean... Groove metal and stuff like that was real big here for a long time ago. It's the same in the states. Um, here in, in Sweden, we got we have a lot of the Viking metal and brutal death metal. So methane really stands out. Actually, so it, it, they do get it. They they dig it. It's a it's a total different thing. We're doing a totally different thing than everybody else here. So it's working good for us in that way. Well, that's cool because for a lot of people, they don't want to hear something new. I struggle with that, and a lot of bands struggle with that. It's like, we want the same old, and it's like, why? And and I'm I'm the same mindset. Why? Why not approach something new? Why not check something new out and find your next favorite band? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah so, right, exactly. So apparently I mean, they're did, pretty open-minded. Yeah, I mean, we did kind of have a, a struggle there in the beginning to get gigs and that kind of stuff, but we went out and just kicked some ass, and and uh, it's been snowballing from there. That's really. great. That is so great. So we got in, we got in touch with one another because you've just put out a two song single. It's "Spit on Your Grave," "Blood, Sweat, and Beer." Love them both. Right. Um, great. Knowing that you have a full length album in the works, what made you decide to go this direction, the two song single format? Yeah, well, in the last fall, we, we recorded a bunch of songs to demo for record companies and stuff like that. And uh, it's been like a year and a half since we put anything out. <laughs> and we decided, oh, we'll take, we'll take the two best songs and we'll, put, we'll mix them up and master them and, and release them. Um, that's pretty much it. You know, we need to get some new stuff out there and people have been asking for it, so here it is. Mm -hmm. That's cool. What track from the band would you promote first to someone who's never heard Methane before? Mm, yeah, that's a good one. I don't know, Scars and Bars is one of my, my all-time favorite songs that we've done. Uh, we have a, a new song that it, I haven't even recorded the vocals on it yet. It's called uh, Devil's Own, which is just going to be a killer mm. kick-ass metal song. I, don't oh, I, I like most of our songs that are my favorite. So I don't have scars and bars. I gotta get that. I don't have that. It should be on. I think I sent you a link for it. So All right, I will go look for it. that, and uh, we'll we'll definitely play it with the interview. Cool. Um, you guys, like I said before, we were actually on the air. We were talking about how deeply you work to promote yourselves. You're a true indie band. You don't have a record label doing all this for you. Is this something that you do by choice, or would you be open to signing with somebody that, that did this for you? Yeah, I mean, definitely record labels. You know, they have the they have the connections and the and the money to to, to advertise that we indie bands don't have. Um, if it was the right people behind us with the right kind of deal, you know, I, we're definitely open to it. Well, I know some bands um, that I've that I've worked with like doing it all on their own, but to me, it does seem like you know now that I've been interested in and in, in researching it as long as I have, it just seems like such 
such a hard process to take all this on, you know, yourselves. So my hat's off to you for doing it as well as you do because you have a very seriously good, you know, catalog of information about the band going on. Yeah, I work 24 hours on that. <laughs> well, you I must. wake up and I, I work, wake up and I promote, and I right before I go to bed I promote, and in between I'm promoting. <laughs> right, right, and I do social media for our station, so I I know what that entails. What's your honest opinion about what the band's gotten out of it? Is it really worth all that effort? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean. They have I've made so many some we have made so much contact with with new people on Twitter, on, on Facebook, on on Google that that have helped us along the way. It's it's just been it's been killer. It's a lot different than the old days, you know, when you we wrote wrote, wrote letters to each other and, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. traded traded cassette tapes. <laughs> I, I, I see people doing it all different ways. Like here in my area, I live in Pacific Northwest. They're going back to like handing out flyers at the at the grocery store and 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 the bars and 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 that way is working really well too. In certain instances, I guess you've got to take whatever works in your area and and run with it. Right, right. We do that too. We go to the shows and we hand, we go hand out flyers and we go out on out in town and and wallpaper the walls, you know, Absolutely. with flyers when we're playing. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, you got to do that. You do. You do. You have to do whatever. And I, I'm constantly tweaking my way of getting word out about the station. So I, I feel your, <laughs> I feel what you're doing, and 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 it, it's a struggle. It's a struggle, but it's a good struggle because, like you said, right. you, you make a contacts. Yeah. Well, the thing, the thing about what you said, going going to shows and giving giving out flyers and stuff like that. You meet people face to face. You're supporting the scene. You're you're making sure the next next Friday there's another going to be another gig, you know? <laughs> it's, right. It's a, it's a positive circle. And and people will look at you and be like, "Oh, I didn't even know this club was there." <laughs> oh, you know, I didn't even. Whoa, you know, I've had people say really thank me, you know, sincerely for. Oh, wow, I didn't know that was there. Or maybe they're new to the area, whatever. You know, it's it's, it's a good thing, like you mm-hmm. say, you make contacts. Can you talk a little bit about the planned t- U.S. tour this fall and where you plan to go? Right. Um, we don't have the dates set yet. We will probably have those. We, we will definitely have those by the end of July. Um, we're coming out, and as soon as we know, we're going to let everybody know where we're at, definitely. I mean, we're just going to come out and rage. Good, come out and rage, and uh, I will be in my new home in uh, the Twin Cities up in Minnesota by then, so, God, I hope you're up there, because... Yeah, we're definitely hoping to come out to the Midwest. Last time we were just out on the East Coast, so we want to spread it out a little bit, definitely. Good, so I'll be looking for that. So, July, and the album is going to be... What's the, what's the timetable for that? The album, I'm not even finished with the, with the vocals yet. Oh, you got a long way to go then. Okay. Yeah, and then we're gonna we're gonna shop it for a while, so okay. we'll see. Somebody picks it up and might might go quick. Otherwise, we'll take our time and put it out probably next year sometime. Okay, and then what else is in the works for the band? You're talking about U.S. tour in in the fall and the album next year. Anything else major we should know about? Well, as soon as we come back from from the states, then we're gonna we're gonna hit the EU, go down in the south part of the of Europe. Mm-hmm. Up here, we're kind of, we're kind of, uh, you know, kind of hidden away from the rest of Europe, up in Sweden. So, right? Have we, you? We're gonna go down to mainland and and bang our heads a little bit and have some fun. Good. Have you done that before? No, we've just been here in Scandinavia, Norway, Sweden, that kind of stuff. So it's time um, to get I, the money I've out. done it with other bands. I've been torn around with Revenant and so and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's nice to go on beer tastings around the oh, world. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I read something <laughs> about the fact that you were, well, of course, you know, if you're writing Blood, Sweat, and Beer, you got to be a beer fan. My fiancé is a huge craft beer fan. What what, what beer do you grab when you get uh, when you get done with your day? What's your what's your favorite? You know, a lot of people think, are going to think I'm real phony, but I love a, a cold Corona. Really? Yeah, on a hot day, a cold Corona. Hey, and that's there's nothing wrong with that. I've, I've knocked a few of those back. <laughs> I'm not real picky though. <laughs> well, that's cool. That's cool. You know, whatever makes you happy. So, you're coming to you to the U.S. for this tour. Just here's a big hypothetical. You know, if you could tour with any band out there in the United States, who would you want to go with, and why? Ooh, 
Who would we want to go out with? Who would work well with methane? Well, musically, I mean, bands like uh, Texas Hippie Coalition, uh, bands like that would be awesome to, would work really well, I think. It would be a good fit. Um, even even thrash bands. I mean, I know Anthrax is out soon, or they've just went through the states, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that would be really cool. Also, to play with with some of those old thrash bands that that are still kicking it. I personally enjoy a tour where not everybody is of the same, um, you know, of the same niche. I suppose it makes it more interesting, and it, it exposes people who perhaps are not Southern Groove fans to something new. So, sure. so yeah, Texas Hippie is great. I love them, too. And they really are a very much the same mindset as you guys. But but I'd like to see you go out with somebody, oh, I don't know, maybe somebody a little different. Okay, who? Well, let's see. Um, different but, but similar-ish, like, 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 a, like a Death Angel or a, or a Testament or a, I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, one of those old thrash bands. That'd be yeah, killer. Yeah, yeah, because... It, or we say old with a classic thrash band. Right, right, because I don't think of them as old either. They're still making music and still doing it beautifully. Right. Um, so where's the best place for my listeners to find out exactly what's going to go up with me? Because I'll want to know when that tour is underway. Right. Uh, Twitter, like I said, Methane Metal at Twitter... Uh, we got a great great following there. We have a face a good Facebook going. Come come hang out on our Facebook. Those are probably the best two places to find out information about us. We have a Reverb Nation page also. We we use it as our uh, home home page. But mm -hmm. <laughs> just Google Methane Metal. I think you find us. It's pretty. <laughs> Why'd you pick the name? Methane. Yeah. Yeah, we were kind of we just wanted a hard hard driven name, you know, and uh, methane's natural gas it explodes. It explodes it so That sounded good. It does. It does. I mean, I when I think of methane it's like I don't know, kiss, fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> so you're explosive on stage cuz I really want to see you guys live. I think it would be awesome from what I've heard. You know, already so far. You guys can check out. They have a great video on YouTube for Hang Me High, which is great. And that was yeah. the one that totally gave me the sense of anarchy groove. You know, I can just see. My my fiancé and I, um, we like road tripping ourselves. So, you know, he looks like an extra from Sons of Anarchy. People ask him that all the time. We totally No, he should have been in the video then. No it? shit, no shit. But, and he looks so <laughs> Scandinavian, but he's not. But we we totally dig this this particular sound. And I know about four or five DJs on the station that are going to be like, yeah, I want these guys in rotation for sure. Um, yeah, want to thank you. This is Tim Scott, bass player and vocals for Methane, for sitting down and talking with me today. We're going to listen to some tunes. Definitely gonna listen to the brand new two singles. And what days are? They, when do they officially come out? The, the official release date is uh, Wednesday, July first. July first, and this and uh, so that was yesterday. Right, right. <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> exactly. So uh, they're brand, brand spanking new. And I uh, hope you enjoy them. This is EJD Vasatia. You're listening to Radio Rift, the Temple of Rock. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. You're listening to Radio Riff, the temple of all things rock. I really enjoyed talking with Tim Scott. Thanks again, Tim, for uh, hooking me up with your brand new music. And now we're going to listen to those two singles off of Methane's upcoming album, Spit on Your Grave, Blood, Sweat, and Beer. You heard me talk about Scars and Bars. We played that as the intro to the show because I wanted to make sure y'all could hear what he thought was the best track to represent his band. But now let's get to the two new pieces of music and then we'll move on. This is the Temple of Rock. Enjoy. More methane coming up next.
Riff. 